All right, up for a mini teardown today, we got this Neptronic uh, modulating actuator. Normally, this would be installed in some kind of like HVAC equipment, and it'd be used to either open or close uh, air dampers, valves for chilled water, hot water, steam, all kinds of stuff. Uh, this was on the roof of a building used for the exhaust system, opening and closing exhaust dampers. Uh, but this one failed, it's already been replaced, but let's take a look at what's inside one of these things. And the first thing you notice is there's a whole bunch of capacitors. This one's a bit different than your standard actuator. Usually these will be uh, spring return, just be a big metal spring in the gearbox that returns it to a position when it's powered off or it'll just stay where it is. This one's actually got a, a microprocessor in it and you can program it which way you want it to go if there's a power failure. But if you actually look at these capacitors, it's actually five farads at two and a half volts. These are actually super capacitors and, at, and when power is cut off, it can actually use power stored in those supercapacitors to run the motor. Now, I think in this case, it's easy to see what the failure was. You got that little 8 pin chip down there that uh, seems like it thoroughly exploded. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. I looked on a new one. It looks like they're, about, they're just a 5 volt regulator, so it was probably supplying power to the microcontroller. Not too much else to the whole thing. Just terminal blocks, potentiometer for position feedback, dip switches for settings, and a, this guy right here, the big resistor, is just for charging the supercapacitors when power is restored. see on the circuit board it's got provisions for 120 volt power as well as 240. I like this sticker for the microcontroller. run-of-the-mill pick microcontroller. Hard to say if it would still work or not with the regulator being blown out. And it looks like the motor is right underneath the circuit board here, so I think I might have to desolder it to pull this circuit board out. Yeah, I just desoldered the motor pads. There's the motor for the actuator. Looks like a pretty standard DC motor. And that's just the shaft for the feedback potentiometer. Alright, I've got a little 12 volt battery here. Let's see if the motor still works. Yep, sure enough. Might be worth keeping this just for the big gearbox. These might be neat to keep around for like a uh, energy harvesting project, you know, like a small solar panel or something. So that's about all there is to this thing. 
I just got done desoldering all the super capacitors, and it looks like two of them may have been affected. Now this one I think is pretty far away from the blown regulator. This one may have just been uh, have either failed or gotten wet at some point. But it's got you know it's pretty crusty. I'll have to test it. The other one I think just got some crud on it from when the regulator exploded. Okay. All right, so let's see how much power is actually in one of these little super caps. I've got a TNC3 hooked up here, and it's got audio out going over to the speaker, and it's got a little LED hooked up for visualization. So let's plug in the capacitor and see how long we get. This controller is actually an ARM 32-bit microcontroller running at 48 megahertz. So it's got a you know it's drawn a few milliamps, plus a couple milliamps for the LED when it flickers on. See what our final voltage is here. It's gonna be hard to do this with one hand. All right, so the microcontroller actually was running down to 1.6 volts. That's pretty good. Or a 3.3 .3 volt chip. <laughs> 